So a brand new Android update brings with it a new pixel drop. And to be honest, that is mostly about the QPR1 release, which if you haven't already seen our deep dive video, go check that out. But there is some extra good stuff here to get into. So let's do just that. Quickly though, give the subscribe button a little bit of a tap and a tickle. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button twice, it helps me out more than you know. Cheers. So Material 3 Expressive is absolutely massive. So as I said, if you haven't already, it is available right now for the Pixel 6 right through to the Pixel 9a. There are all the eligible devices in between those two series. The September Pixel drop though is more of a chaser to that main shot. It's mostly focused on a few other minor things like mostly the addition of features to the Pixel Buds, including adaptive audio, which effectively this means that your buds will now adjust to outside noise or surrounding noises. The volume might lower if you're in a quiet environment, for instance, but the new loud noise protection can actually protect your ears against loud noises that are going on nearby. I'm guessing it uses ANC somehow. Google hasn't explained fully how this works, but yeah, I'm interested to see how this works in person. Gemini Live is also getting some improvements with this as well on how it handles talking in those loud surroundings. Google says it should be able to pick up your voice even in situations where others are talking loudly or even if there's music down in the background or a movie or something like that. That's not all though, as you soon will be able to do things like accept a call or dismiss a text message using a nod or a head shake. And I hope these do work because head controls on earbuds I've used in the past haven't, be, haven't been always the best in my experience. So I'm hoping that this one actually works as it's intended. But yeah, this should be rolling out right now or should be rolling out in the next couple of weeks as part of this Pixel drop. So yeah, you will need this update for it to work properly. But yeah, I'm excited to see what this does to the Pixel Buds Pro 2, which are pretty solid earbuds. I actually thought as well that another new feature was already live here in this Pixel Drop is that when you are navigating, if you have a Wear OS watch paired with your device, it should automatically display directions on the watch, watch screen itself. Yeah, I actually have to admit, I thought this was already live and I thought it was live on Pixel Watch devices, but hey, it's another nice new function, especially if you're navigating around a place that you don't really know very well. So that's the headline editions of the Pixel Drop, but there are some extra options here as part of the Android platform updates, which and Google is, is kind of tying these two together. It, there, it's a really nice way of doing it. There is the new update for the quick share layout, which should already be rolling out. You might have this already. It's way nicer than it was before. It's a little, it looks similar, but it's also a little bit more organized at the same time. It lets you see photos and videos before you hit that send option in sort of like a collage. There's the new tabs that you can switch to receive and send on the left and right, which is another nice touch, I think. I think it makes it a little bit more clean. There's also a new progress percentage progress bar, which will show you how far you're into an upload or download, which I have to say quick share in general is a really underrated feature. While I have your attention as well, I want to point you towards an application that I've been using on my Mac called Neardrop. It's been around for a little while. It helps you send devices or files one way to a Mac device. Really nice application, super simple. So if you are a Mac user like I am, then at least you can send your files from your Android device to your Mac. So yeah, that's a plug for something separate, but yeah, it means you can use that new quick share menu to send things to your laptop if you want to. AI writing tools are also being added to Gboard here with the Android platform update. Everything should be processed locally with this, so you don't have to worry about stuff being sent to the cloud. You can do a few things like proofreading as well, which will give you little grammar fixes, help clean up your writing, or even give you the option for a full rewrite to change the tone if you need to. I think this is a really nice option. It's really good that Gboard is getting these functions as it feels really at home here, rather than putting them on an application by application basis on Android phones. And hey, if you don't already know, I love Emoji Kitchen, which is why I stick with Gboard actually on every single Android device I use. And the new updates here to Emoji Kitchen mean more remix possibilities for you to mash up, play around, and really entertain your friends. I'm hoping that we have more inanimate objects here to use, but I'll be putting it through its paces, don't you worry. So I will report back once I've really got to grips with these new Emoji Kitchen updates. QPR1 also added audio sharing to Pixel devices if you didn't already know that. And this is a new feature for the Android platform wholesale. It lets you pair more earbuds to the same stream as it were. I guess it's kind of like multi-point connectivity, but it also means you can start a private broadcast and share it with your friends via QR code to let other people in your vicinity join in and listen to your playlists or your podcast with their own earbuds, which I think might be useful if you want to share those offline playlists when traveling, for instance. I know this is something I'm probably going to be using over the next few months. That's all though for the software some pixel drop, some Android platform, but I wanted to share this last little snippet too, because Androidify is coming back. Yes, you heard me correctly. So if you can remember the old Androidify little mascots that you could customize, I think it was back in IO 2016 or 2017. Well, they're finally getting updated for 2025 with, you guessed it, a little AI. 
There was actually a demo back at IO, if you saw that as well, but it's coming out officially now. This was a preview of what was to come. Basically, this lets you upload a selfie, then with a combination of Gemini 2.5 Flash, Imogen, and even VO in some indications, it will generate an animated custom Android bot based upon the selfie that you've uploaded. To be honest, I have to say there's not a lot that I don't love about this, and apparently every single Friday throughout September, you will be able to animate your custom bot into an eight second video, but it is pretty limited in that regard. I'm really excited to try this out, to be honest. I really love the Androidify option. And I, and, and I must admit, I'd even buy my own creation if Google wants to make that a thing. Maybe we can start making our own custom bots and buy them from the Google store. Heck, 3D print me one, guys. I need one of these. Wait, basically, I love them. I, I wanna see more of this from Google. I wanna see more merch like this. It would be a really, really cool option. But that is effectively a lot. Pixel drop, other cool stuff you name it. To say I'm exhausted over these past couple of weeks is an understatement after the Pixel launch, but yeah, we're going to go again. We don't stop around here. I do hope you enjoyed this though. I love making this stuff, especially as on the Android platform, because that's really where I find my passion. So yeah, after all, hopefully you're enjoying this on your phones. Go install it right now. It should, the OTA should be available either now or in the next couple of hours. Cheers for watching though. And um, yeah, I'll speak to you in a bit.